In this video tutorial, we're going to be covering how to install the DNS role for Windows Server 2012. I just finished installing Windows Server 2012 on a brand new server, so I'll go ahead and log in. Press Ctrl Alt Delete to sign in. Go ahead and put in the password to sign in. We're going to use Server Manager to go ahead and add the roles and features to the server. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and assign this server a static IP address. DNS servers require static IP addresses because you'll be configuring your clients to point directly to the server. You want to make sure that the server's IP address doesn't change. So let's go ahead and minimize Server Manager and let's access the adapter properties. I'm going to go ahead and go to the Network and Sharing Center, change adapter settings, and access the properties of this Ethernet network card. Go to IPv4, Properties, Let's go ahead and assign it a static IP address. The IP address that you'll use will depend on the network that the server is on. I'll go ahead and use the 192.168.0 and let's assign it the address of 1. You'll also need to assign a subnet mask. For this simple example, we won't need to assign a default gateway, but typically you'll want to put in the IP address of your default gateway. For the preferred DNS server adders, we'll use the same IP address. By doing so, we'll be telling this server to use itself for DNS. Click OK. Click Close. Let's close this window. Close this as well. And open up Server Manager. We're now ready to add roles and features. Click on Add Roles and Features. Click Next. Windows Server 2012 has improved the ability to add roles and features. We're now able to add roles and features for the same local machine, a remote machine, a virtual machine, and offline hard disks. For this example, the server is up and running, so we'll just go ahead and click Next. If you had more servers or systems on the network that were detected by the wizard, they would be listed below. Since this is the only server that we're working with, we'll go ahead and click Next. We want to look for the DNS server role in this list. Place a check mark next to the role you want to install. Once you do that, the wizard has detected that the remote server administrating tools have not been installed on this machine. We'll need that as well, so let's go ahead and include those features. If those features are already installed on your machine, they're not required to be installed a second time. Go ahead and click Next. Click Next. You can read over more information about the DNS server role. Click Next when you're ready. In some cases, when you add server roles and features, a restart is required. If you check off this box, the system will automatically restart the server when the wizard is completed. If not, you'll be prompted to restart. Click Install. The installation of this role should only take just a few minutes. Okay, so the process of the installing this DNS server role has been completed. Go ahead and click Close. Okay, we can launch the DNS administrative tool to manage our DNS server. Go ahead and go to the Start menu and now you'll notice that there's a tile for the DNS Server Console. If you're familiar with Windows 2003 or 2008 DNS Server Administration, Windows Server 2012 Administration is practically identical. As you can see, we have an MMC console launched and our server is listed on the left side pane. You can go ahead and expand it. If you expand the forward lookup zone, you'll notice that there aren't any zones created yet. If you want to go ahead and host a DNS zone, go ahead and right click, select New Zone, and use the wizard to create your zone. Click on Next. There's three different types of zones you can create. You can create a primary zone, a secondary, or a stub zone. You'll also notice that you might have an option to store the zone in Active Directory. Since Active Directory is not installed on this server, this option is unavailable. Since this is the first DNS server in our DNS server farm, we'll go ahead and create a primary zone. Click Next. Let's give our zone a name. The name that you'll choose will depend on the DNS hostname that you've registered publicly, or if this is an internet site, whatever domain you're using within your network. Click Next. DNS is providing a default name for this zone. Since we're creating a primary zone and it's not stored in Active Directory, this zone will be saved as a text file on the local hard drive. If you're importing a zone from another DNS server, you can use an existing file. However, this is a new zone, so we'll go ahead and create a new file. Click Next. DNS supports dynamic updates from clients. This gives the ability for clients to automatically register host names in the DNS zone without an administrator. In this example, we'll just choose not to allow dynamic updates. Click Next. You can review your options and click Finish. 
you'll notice that the DNS.com zone has now been created. We could go ahead and create some records. Let's give one a try. Right click, let's create a simple A record, and we'll create a www record. The IP address that we want this to resolve to is 127.0.0.1. The IP address that you choose will ultimately depend on where you want the www record to map to. If you wanted to create an associated PTR record, go ahead and enable this box. For this example, it's not necessary. Click Add Host. The record's been created. Click OK. And we're all done. We can also easily create reverse lookup zones. A reverse lookup zone maps an IP address back to a name. You can think of it as the opposite of a forward lookup zone. Let's go ahead and create a zone. Right-click New Zone. And we'll go through the same exact wizard. Click Next. We want to go ahead and create a primary zone as well. In this case, we're still using IPv4 for this example, so we'll click Next. The network ID that we want to go ahead and create or assign to this zone is the 192.168.0 network. Click Next. Accept the default name. Click Next. Click Next again. And Finish. To create a record in a reverse lookup zone, go ahead and select the zone. Right-click and say New PTR Record. I'm going to go ahead and create a record for this DNS server. In this case, we want this IP address to go ahead and map back to this name, dns1.domain.com. Click OK. Now let's go ahead and demonstrate that we can resolve these names to IPs and IPs to names. I'll need a command prompt for some help. I'll use Windows Explorer to get to my command prompt, and I'll use the nslookup command to communicate with the DNS service. So type in nslookup and hit enter. As you notice, the default server that we're speaking to is dns1.domain.com. That happens to be the DNS server that we just installed and are working on. Let's go ahead and type in www.domain.com and see if we can resolve the name. And as you can see, the server did go ahead and in fact return a result of 127.0.0.1. If we type in an IP address, for instance, we created a PTR record for 192.168.0.1, it'll return back dns1.domain.com. In the upcoming video tutorials in this series, we'll take a closer look at how to configure the DNS server role. So that completes the end of this video tutorial. Thank you for watching.